Right, a former mayor, the first black U.S. senator from New Jersey, and a very famous Democrat now running for president. Instead of shuffling more children into cages and coffins, where we see the faces of our leaders on television and feel pride, not shame. Together, we will channel our common pain back into our common purpose. Together, America, we will rise. I'm Cory Booker, and I'm running for president of the United States of America. It's official, and Senator Booker spoke in Newark today to outline his agenda. My parents' generation knew that if we came together, blacks and whites, Christians and Jews, we can upend Jim Crow. We used to be a people that can point into the sky and look at the moon and change it from a dream to a, to a destiny. There's no Republican or Democratic way to get there. You definitely don't get there by fighting each other, beating each other down and dividing people against themselves. We did those things because we found our common ground. I'm joined by the Root.com's Jason Johnson, a political science professor, and the Center for American Progress Action Fund's Juanita Tolliver, who worked with 2016 candidates at the new uh, non-profit, I should say, the new profit organization. Uh, thanks to both of you. Uh, Jason, what does it mean to have Senator Booker in this race now? It means we have one of the biggest names in the race that we were waiting for. Senator Harris is relatively new. Senator Warren has been around for a long time. But Senator Booker has been known for the guy who can bring a crowd. He can bring the boys and the girls to the yard. He's had celebrity girlfriends. He's been here. He's been there. So this is a big name. Uh, even though right now Senator Booker hasn't necessarily been doing well in some of the early polls, he has the ability to absolutely transform what this race is looking like for several reasons. Number one, it's not just just because he's an African-American male. Two, he's the only person who's joined the race right now who has true executive experience as a mayor. He can point to places where he initiated policy and actually made a difference one way or another. He also has the opportunity to sort of play up the fact that he's worked with Republicans and he's made huge and sort of dynamic performances in Senate Judiciary hearings. So I, I think he's going to be a formidable candidate. Uh, I don't know that he'll be the nominee. Time will tell. But sure. he is definitely shaking up this race. Wanting well, to take a listen to Booker and some of these other candidates who've jumped in when the commander-in-chief speaks they become poison they give license to bigotry and hate in our country speak in a way that is about inciting fear as a distraction from the fact you're getting nothing done except helping the richest people and the biggest corporations he can whine he can lie he can tweet until his thumbs fall off but we're gonna keep fighting back what do you see in these early entrants that might be uh, somewhat different than, uh, than the Democratic Party races in the past? And certainly it seems like a lot of progressives getting in early. Yeah, I think this is a prime example of a couple of candidates who are not afraid to take Trump head on. And I think that's something that voters are going to be really interested in seeing, of who can body the president, who can really call out some of the questionable racist thing that he does or says and the, and the values that he purports um, directly while also presenting a positive vision related to economic reform as well as political reform. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, economics. I mean, Cory Booker is certainly on the left on a bunch of social issues on criminal justice reform. Uh, and then on economics, he has been a little more center left, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. and certainly talked about, you know, being friendly towards Wall Street and innovation and job creation. Uh, Chris Christie is someone who is in his state and they have, despite being really polar partisan opponents, they've had a kind of a reasonably warm relationship, at least by the standards of today's fighting. <laughs> Take a listen, uh, Juanita, to Chris Christie on, on Booker's threat to Trump today. Talented, smart, articulate. I think he's got a legitimate chance to be a serious potential problem for the president in the general election. If he goes way wacky left, then he's just going to be another one of those people and he won't be able to distinguish himself. What do you read in that uh, coming from such a big Trump ally, Juanita? I think it's a really highlights the fact that there is an opportunity here to paint a picture about how Trump has really screwed over American workers, how he's really prioritized the wealthiest of the wealthiest and corporations through every piece of legislation. Let's be real. The Trump tax bill is the one and only thing that he he really has as far as legislative victory thus far. And Cory Booker has an opportunity here to paint that picture. That does not require what Chris Christie's talking about, wacky left. No, that is just real facts about American 
Americans struggling to uh, to meet their basic needs, Americans living paycheck to paycheck, and there's an opportunity here to really dig into that. Uh, and before I go back to Jason on, on a couple stories we've, we've promised to get to because it's a busy Friday night, Juanita, I also yeah. just wanted to broaden beyond the Democrats and ask you, what do you think about what we are in week one of, of Howard Schultz's flirtation? This is a person uh, oh, who is, is well... Oh, go ahead. You, you seem ready. Go oh, for I'm it. Like, come on. I saw a head even, roll. I'll stop even, the intro. <laughs> even Bloomberg knew not to pull this stunt. And honestly, one lesson that we've learned, especially in 2016, is that an independent candidate who picks off 2%, maybe 3% of voters can be a major spoiler. So Schultz needs to have several seats. Take a note from Bloomberg here and just bow out now. Let me read to you on that point briefly what we're seeing in reporting from inside uh, Schultz land, that he's, quote, freaking out about the criticism, at least according to a Fox Business report, that he was, quote, surprised that Democrats oh. didn't like this, although he's running against Democrats. I don't know why that's a surprise. And he's, quote, potentially rethinking his aspirations, Juanita. It sounds like someone who didn't give it genuine thought before he put his neck out there. Snap. <laughs> Snap. Uh, Juanita, I think this was your first time on The Beat. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Looking forward to visiting you again. We'd love to have you back. Uh, what I'm going to do is turn a page from politics to civil rights. Uh, Jason stays with me. This is a story I mentioned at the top of our show. This is a photo that is now confirmed from Virginia Governor Ralph Northam's 1984 medical school yearbook page. As you see, it has this highly offensive image of a man in blackface standing next to a person wearing a KKK robe. The photo first obtained in a story from the Washington Post from a library maintained by a Virginia school. Now, moments ago, Northam, a Democrat, has confirmed he is in the photo. He says this is racist and offensive. He does not identify in his new statement that we got literally minutes ago which person he is in the photo. I'll read to you Northam saying, quote, I'm deeply sorry for the decision I made to appear as I did in this photo and for the hurt that decision caused then and now. Then being 1984, uh, Jason, your view of what this photo means uh, and the implications uh, for people in Virginia as well as around the nation uh, when they see someone who's now in this position of power uh, having done this. Uh, Ari, I'll start by saying Happy Black History Month, everybody. This is, this is going to get really interesting. Uh, first off, I found the parsing of Northam's letter to be very interesting. He's like, I'm in the photo. But he doesn't say, am I the guy dressed as a Klan member? Am I the guy in blackface? It's like, am I R. Kelly? Am I Harvey Weinstein? Like, neither one of these is particularly good. You also have to consider the fact that his lieutenant governor is Justin Fairfax, one of the most quietly powerful and influential lieutenant governors in the country right now. So this is going to be very difficult for Northam to explain. It's going to have a lot to do with his credibility. If other things come out, this will damage his ability to properly legislate. I also think this. This is indicative of how terrible the op research is of the Republican Party. How are we mm. finding this out now when the selection happened so long ago? So there's a lot to go through this. I, I don't know that Northam will be able to survive this kind of scandal because this probably won't be the only thing that comes up. Right, and you're saying it may, it may be a touch point for a lot more questions that reveal other things. Yes. Dealing with just this, when you, when you look, it is not as if doing a bad thing is any way mitigated or fixed by how long ago. Um, but different right. politicians of different ages have talked about growing and evolution in certain ways. How bad is it that 1984, to many people, does not seem like a time where that photo makes any sense, even though it would be bad in any time? Yeah, I mean, it, this is not, or this is not ancient history. You know, a lot of us were actually alive at this point in the 80s. But you have to remember, and this is, I think, something that Americans tend to want to forget. You know, in 1983, 1984, the Dukes of Hazard was still on. You had, you had a car called the General Lee that kids were still playing with on the playground. So, to a certain extent, Northam's behavior really may not have been out of the mainstream for people in the military, out of the mainstream for people of his age at that time. That doesn't mean it's appropriate. He can say he's learned his lesson. I don't know that the state of Virginia voters will be that forgiving. And more importantly, it's only if this is a one-time thing. If this opens up a door to discussions about other behavior that he's engaged in, if other pictures like this show up, again, it erodes his ability to have any sort of credibility. And I say this again, his lieutenant governor, Justin Fairfax, just made news just two weeks ago by standing down from the Senate 
when it, uh, members of the Senate attempted to sort of celebrate the birthdays of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson, what Justin Fairfax says about this could literally be the future of whether or not Northam keeps his job. Uh, Jason Johnson steeped in so many of these issues, as well as obviously some of the intramurals in Virginia, which aren't always uh, national news. Appreciate your views on the story, sir. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jason. Now up ahead.